Number one as a woman. Number two as a Meru. Number three as a Kenyan. Congratulations. And uh, it is said that if you empower a woman, you empower a community. I know you're going far, and God bless you. Thank you. Our chief guest today, Lady Justice Martha Kome. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Let me pass my most heartfelt congratulations to you, Madam, on my own behalf and on behalf of Deputy Governors Countrywide. I happen to be the Chair of the Council of Deputy Governors, and we are immensely proud of you. I have had a chance to research about your past, and one thing that has come to fore is that strong women are not just born. Strong women are forged through challenges, through storms that all of us face every day. And therefore, we celebrate you, we congratulate you, and it's upon your shoulders that those um, of us who are younger in leadership stand and we pride ourselves. I'm sure you'll do a great job. Should you need a sister, please call on us. I thank you very much. the Chief Justice, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Council of Governors and the 47 County Government, I wish to first and foremost congratulate you, Honorable Lady Justice, Mother Kome, the Chief Justice and President of the Supreme Court, on your appointment as the first female Chief Justice in the Republic of Kenya. This is well deserved, and we celebrate you for this achievement. The Council of Governors appreciate your exemplary contribution to the judiciary, where you have shaped the jurisprudence during your tenure, especially as a judge of the Court of Appeal. We also acknowledge your support, uh, your support for devolution and upholding the rule of law without fear or favor. You have indeed protected and administered and defended our constitution by upholding the dignity and the respect for the judicial system in Kenya. In the previous years, the judiciary and the county government have had a robust and flexible working relationship. Some of the key milestones as a result of the collaboration includes one, favorable judgments on devolution, the most remarkable being the decision of the Supreme Court, adversary reference number three of 2019, on division of revenue between the national and county government. It is through this opinion that the division of revenue process has now become less disputable. We thank you for that. In three, increasing the construction of courts through partnership with county government. More courts have been constructed at county levels. This has ensured access to justice to the common Mwanaiji. As a county government, we look forward to strengthening the existing working relationships. In this regard, we hope to cooperate the four, in the following areas very briefly. One, further construction of courts in the counties in order to increase access to justice. Two, participation of county government in the court, court users committees. Three, development of framework for appropriations of court fees, fines, and emanating from the county registrations. Further, the Council of Governors seeks to convene a tripartite meeting between Parliament, the Judiciary, and the Council of Governors to deepen the conversation of in, on areas of common interest. Honorable Lady Justice, we also wish to inform you that we intend to pay a courtesy call to you, to your office, at the earliest convenience. As we gather here to celebrate your appointment, we as the Council of Governor, County Governor, Governors wish you all the best as you undertake your new role as the Chief Justice of the Republic of Kenya. We are confident that you will promote fairness, competency, and integrity as you diligently serve the people in the Republic. And now, on behalf of the Council of Governors and 47 County government, Governors, I once again congratulate you and assure you of our total support. 
Thank you very much. Asante. Asante san. Thank you very much. I think the 47 counting and government led by their chair of council of governors and the team have done an excellent job. Can we applaud them? Thank you very much and I think you have used your time well. Now uh, moving on to judiciary, uh, we have the president of the court of appeal, Justice Daniel Musinga. And when you finish, we will be having on stage Honorable jo Joki Dongo. Please come and give your statement of support and congratulations on that team. The Honorable Chief Justice of the Republic of Kenya, and uh, your dear husband. I stand here to first of all congratulate you on that well-deserved position that you have earned. It was not given to you. You deserved it and there was, there was no favoritism at all. Now, let me say this because of the two minutes that we have been given. I want to speak as an insider, one who has known our Chief Justice for the 18 years that we've worked together. Speaking from my heart, I first knew the Honorable Lady Justice Mother uh, Kome when we worked together in Akuru. And she found me there in that station. I had worked with other judges before. But when she came as the head of station, she totally transformed the work ethics in that place. High Court of Nakuru used to cover all the way to Kericho, Narok. There was no judge in those areas. Within the a period of two years or so, when we were together, we almost cleared the backlog in that station. In our Chief Justice, we have a very hard-working judge. We have a judge who is extremely innovative, and you are going to see how she's going to do things in a different way. She's a go-getter. She is very focused. She consults widely, but makes independent, well-informed decisions. She is a team player. My Chief Justice, I want to say, on behalf of judges, magistrates, judicial staff, you have our unqualified support. We are going to support you entirely to achieve the mandate that the people of Kenya have given you. Lastly, the legislature, the executive, if you give the support that our Chief Justice requires, she is going to transform the institution of the judiciary in a way that we have never not imagined. She is going to take judiciary places. Watch this face. Thank you. Good afternoon. The Chief Justice, the first husband of the judiciary of the Republic of Kenya, the Speaker of the Senate, the leader of majority, the Chairman of the Council of Governors, 
the governors here present, the CSs, um, my sister, um, Madam Kobia, Monica, uh, Rafael Tuju, and uh, everyone in the room. Actually, I, 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 as we are here celebrating uh, that there is now a woman at the helm of one arm of government, and sitting in this room as we celebrate her, we have members of the executive, members of parliament, members of the judiciary, members of the fourth estate, members of the fifth estate, the non-governmental civil society, all of whom I belong to, <laughs> because I worked in each and every one of them. This is a great day. But I wanted to just say this. As a member of the Committee of Experts, when we brought to Kenyans the 2010 Constitution, it was the culmination of 20 years of struggle to get a voice for those who are not represented in public office, including and especially women and other marginalized groups. 20 years is a long time. I think sometimes the young women of today, they don't realize the struggle. You walk in and you have already found us there. It was not like this. In 1992, when we were supporting Charity Ngilu and Martha Karu and Agnes Ndetei, there were four women members of parliament. In 1997, there were eight members of parliament. Eight. When I joined parliament in 2003, we were 18 and the men thought we were far too many. Never then could we have imagined, particularly in a very patriarchal judiciary, that we would have a woman heading the judiciary. And this is an amazing day. The judiciary was so difficult, we have always tried to have the first woman president, We've even tried to have a woman speaker. But CJ, how do you get through the patriarchy, the layers? It was a very women-friendly environment, and now we have this wonderful woman in charge. My dear sister, CJ Martha, we have come a long way. Sometimes I don't know whether you'd be my older sister. There were times it was a bit confusing. You are my mother's friend and my friend at the same time. So when my mother and I didn't get on, I don't know whose friend you were. I was your secretary in FIDA when we started these conversations. When, when we went to Safari Park and for the first time we were able to achieve six of the 12 nominated seats to be women and we thought, wow, women, we have done it. But thank you for being who you are. You have been successful on everything you do. And because you have a calm, firm character and hand. This is the kind of character that I don't think the judiciary leadership has seen before. And judiciary, it can be a difficult place, ladies and gentlemen, because can you imagine running an institution that is full of lawyers who all went and read the same law, who all have opinions that are different, who all interpret the law differently, and it's true. We all think we know. Speaker, isn't that true? Difficulty with lawyers. So here you are running an institution where you have to deal with all these legal minds and being able to temper, to be able to deal with the interrelationships with the other arms of government. I am convinced we have that best person. You have my support, personal support, as you know, you have the support of the Supreme Court judges. You gave us your vision for the Supreme Court. You told us that you want to deliver justice to Kenyans. You want to deal with human rights issues. You want to deal with the poor and the marginalized. And we support you and we shall deliver. Congratulations and welcome, CJ. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, when the organizing committee was looking for the theme of the day, I think it's like they were listening to you. They said, justice for all. So I think it really has us well, aligns very well with what you have said. And uh, thank you, thank you uh, judicially for spending your time well. 
And for the rest of the people, thank you for keeping quiet. I hope we continue that way so that we can listen to each other. Let me now move to my colleagues because I know they are going to be quick uh, before we give to the legislature, which we will wait a bit. <laughs> Let me invite on stage Waziri Rafael Tuju. Rafael Tuju is very special to us, actually, and I think you'll say it. Anytime we are looking for men who support the journey of gender equality, he has stood with us. So even when he, because we invited quite a number of my colleagues, most of them are elsewhere, they have given their apologies, but Rafael Tuju Waziri is here. Please come and give your congratulations message and the statement of support. Uh, Lady Justice Martha Kome, Chief Justice of the Republic of, Ke of Kenya and President of the Supreme Court. That sounds good, doesn't it? And it's really great that we can be able to say that in this country. May I acknowledge the gentleman who is behind the successful lady. And ladies, let's be fair. Whenever there's a successful man, we say there is a lady behind. So this time, uh, we should be able to do that. Uh, I have very little time within which, within which to say uh, how much I'm impressed by her grit, her intellect. She's more than qualified from a, an academic standpoint. And her being the Chief Justice has nothing at all to do with her gender. It just so happened that she's a lady. And really, I could say much, but I just want to be able to thank you most sincerely for being a beacon there for my daughter who reminded me several times that no woman had landed on the moon. But I'm now able to tell her we have a lady chief justice. You can become anything you want to become in this world. I have daughters and I have sons. And when you get to a position where you are now, you spell hope for my daughter. This is very personal to me. Thank you very much. Allow me to bring on stage uh, CS Monica Juma, who is here with us. Please give us a clap. She is representing the executive. Yes. I just thought that this is a celebration, and I think it's beautiful to begin a celebration with a celebration. I think we are at a point in history where we have transformation beckoning us, and I want really to congratulate the Chief Justice, Honorable Mada Kome, who is the President of the Supreme Court of the Republic of Kenya. I also want to congratulate Mr. Kome. I think this is a journey you have to walk with Martha because as women, when we find ourselves in positions of responsibility, I think the greatest point of support is your spouse. And so I really want to call upon you
to walk with Martha, to provide her the comfort, and to love her at this time. The President of the Court of Appeal, Justices here present, and members of the Judiciary, the Speaker of the Senate, the Leader of the Majority in National Parliament, the Chair of the Council of Governors and Governors here present, members of the County Government, colleague Cabinet Secretaries, CASES here present, PSS, and other members of the executives, representatives of the independent commissions and various authorities and sagas, members of the private sectors, and members of the civil society and other publics, friends, professionals, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I just want to begin by thanking Professor Kobia, really, and her team for making this happen. Many of us, as we watched Martha through the journey of nomination, of appointment, were fidgeting but excited. And so we wrote notes. We wrote congratulatory notes. We wanted to have lunch with her. We wanted to tell her congratulations. So I want to thank this team for just doing this in an orderly and inclusive way, which reflects who Martha is. But what a day, what a day that defines their, what this nation is, a nation that is a trend setter, a nation that is deepening its democratic credentials around an environment that is fragile and uncertain and sure. But we are sure, we are very sure. We are ready to field our full team. That is the meaning of Martha. We are ready to field our best professional acumen. That is what Martha Kome represents. And so I want to congratulate your Lady Justice, Martha Kome, and to thank His Excellency for demonstrating yet again his confidence and support for the women folk of this country. <clears throat> support for inclusion, support for believing in equality, support for believing in our delivery on the national agenda. I have no doubt, Lady Justice, that you will make this country a better place that you will transform and provide the, this country as a beacon. But you are also a navigating light, a navigating light for the world, a navigating light for this nation, a navigating light for professionals, a navigating light for women, young and old. And I really want to thank you for the courage of taking up the mantle I remember when this position fell vacant and we were talking amongst ourselves and wondering, would the women take the courage to apply? Would they? Because the environment was so hostile, as we all know. But you took courage because you believed that you had a historic mission to perform. And in doing so then, I want you to pull on the network that is around this building today and beyond. I want to offer myself, and I really want to thank you, both at a personal and institutional point. For as long as I serve in the Ministry of Defense, I will offer that ministry to your support so that we can support you. I also want to offer the support of all the young people that are watching us. They are energetic, they are ready, and please remember, remember we are here. But it is also important for all of us to be there. Let's not wait for Martha to call on us. Let's go to her. Let's go to her and help her to deliver for this beautiful nation. And so for me, I can only say it with great admiration. In Ukambani, we say, Kidanze Kibo. <laughs> Let the Spirit of God lead you. And thank you. Thank you, Waziri. Thank you. Thank you very much, C.S. Juma. 
I think you have just hit it on the nail why we are here. The support this room brings and the support of the networks of these people who are here is all being made available. Let me, uh, before we bring our Chief Justice on stage, we have to give time to registrature so that uh, they can be able to give their statement of, com uh, of commitment and support and I uh, will call upon His Excellency Ken Rusaka to come and invite. There are many members here, but I don't want to take the thunder from you. You do it your way because we want to give you time, otherwise you might withhold the budget. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being strategic. <laughs> Our guest of honor today, Lady Chief Justice, Mother Kaome, distinct and Mze Kiragu, all protocols observed. Maybe before I say something, let me ask members of parliament, both National Assembly and Senate, who are here to stand. But on their behalf, Let's give them a clap. These are the, the ones who approve budget. On their behalf, I will want to welcome the leader of majority from the National Assembly to speak also on behalf of members of the National Assembly and Parliament. Welcome. Honorable Chief Justice, uh, the Justice Mother Kome, and the better half. Uh, my wife keeps reminding me that. Members of the executive, legislature, and judiciary there in a Thanksgiving luncheon in honor of Lady Justice Martha Kome. Of course, they have congratulated her and also assured her of their total support when it comes to working and getting things done. We have even heard from the Court of Appeal president, that is Daniel Musinga, saying that Martha Kome is a team player and she will transform the judiciary if given support. Well, that um, you know, function continues. I am Ashley Mazuri. I leave you in the able hands of Abby Aguina. Because of the lockdown, he found himself now not going there and not coming here because I said, I'm not yielding. We agreed. I'm having the lunch. You go and sort out kissy. So I want to bring you uh, also the greetings and goodwill of the Speaker of the National Assembly, uh, Justin Muturi, and our colleagues in Parliament. We've had the opportunity to meet in Parliament uh, on, on a couple of, at least at the prayer breakfast, and I think we agreed on the modalities of how we're going to work together and even prayed for it. So I don't want to expose it here, but uh, we've agreed there will be mutual cooperation, and indeed we did our first, we have done two things so far uh, as part of that commitment. We did invite the judiciary, I think for the first time, to be represented during the budget speech and give you a box for judiciary. It has never happened before, but uh, things happen. We also, yesterday, uh, did complete our committee of supply, and uh, I can tell you for a fact, we never touched your budget. Okay? So, and, and I think it's part of this ongoing commitment so that the three arms of government can continue working together. You know, when Madison talked of the checks and balances, uh, emphasized the need to make sure that none of the arms uh, gets too strong to strangle the other. It's, you know, interdependence, and working together, juggling all the balls together so that we get to work for the great republic. And I, as I quit, finish, I read from uh, Booker T. Washington's book, Up From Slavery, 
and when he had to address the whites in the south, one of the things he did mention, and I like it very much, is uh, using the, the hand, that we all may be different when you look at the finger level, but if you go down, you will see we are conjoined, and none of us can operate without each other. So from that perspective, I want on behalf of the National Assembly and on my speaker to, uh, as we did during the prayer breakfast, to promise you our ongoing support as we work together for this great republic. Thank you very much. Thank you. Maybe before I say something, the members of the National Assembly are very few. Maybe let them just say their names because they are the ones who impeach speakers. Just, uh, <laughs> just mention your name. And confirm CJs so they can actually just your name, please, in the interest of time. Good afternoon. My name is Jennifer Shamala, Member of Parliament representing Special Interest, a member of the Justice and Legal Affairs Committee that unanimously approved Lady Justice Martha Kome. Congratulations, Chief Justice. Congratulations. I'm Dr. Rachel Nyamai, member for Kitui South and chair departmental committee on lands. Thank you, Chief Justice. My name is Masu Anjiko Gakuya, member of parliament, Kasarani, Nairobi County, the only elected woman single constituency in Nairobi, sorry for that. Uh, nothing much. In Parliament, I serve in the Budget and Appropriation Committee and also Transport, and the last one, Committee on Appointment. God bless you. Okay. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Our Chief Justice, Lady Justice Martha Kome, and the invited guests. My name is Abdul Rahim Daoud. I'm the MP of the Chief Justice. So you better take care of me. I want to say, I want to say me as her MP, together with my colleagues from Meru, we are really, really proud of the Chief Justice. And we are proud that this is the first time a lady is on top of there, and we are expecting in future we'll even have a chief executive from the other gender. That's a woman president of Kenya. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you so much. I think those are the members of parliament from the National Assembly. I'm actually struggling to look for where men are. And I want to agree that actually the ladies have taken the space, like they say. So on my own behalf and on behalf of the Senate, I also want to congratulate you, Madam C uh, Chief Justice, for this well-deserved appointment. Um, I know it's a tough job, but take solace in what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, that God cannot give you so much that you cannot handle. I am sure that you are equal to the task, and we have already started seeing the fruits and even for inviting us, I want to quote what Chinu Achebe says. Although he says a man, but I want to say a woman. Who invites kinsmen and women to his home for a feast does not do so to, 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 to save them from starvation. They all have food in their homes. When we gather in our homesteads, it's not that we cannot see the moonlight. We see it there. But we come here because we must come together and work together. I want to assure you of the support of the Senate, and we have worked very hard, I mean closely, and I was just cracking a joke with the, the Chairman of Council of Governors that he's the greatest beneficiary of the judicial system. You remember, he was the first governor ever to be impeached twice in the Republic of Kenya. But the courtesy of our judicial system he went back and he was elected, and today he has spoken here as the chairman of the COG, Heko Kwenu Judiciary. 
And just like I said last time, a strong judicial system ensures our democracy. Chief Justice, that is now in your hands. That is where we all run to when things are not working. We have had our own battles with the National Assembly, even as a, house, as a parliament, we have had to come to you for arbitration. And that is where we hope that the mighty and the law get justice. We all look forward to uh, coming to you wherever we want justice to be done to us. And we don't need to talk so much about you. We have read about you. You have been in this country. We have seen what you have done. And I'm sure that you will even do better. What makes it even better is that you are a strong believer in God. You will need God very close to you. I can assure you, it is by the grace of God that I'm still the speaker. <laughs> Sometimes I've seen things come my way, and I thought I would just go home. But I told God, you have not put me here to shame me, and you have not given me this responsibility and failed to protect me. That is why I'm still the speaker. Sometimes that house gets hot, and I know I preside over one arm of government. You remember the formula to send money to the counties, failed 12 times. At one point, I had to adjourn the House and procedurally, and I was told, we are going to impeach you. For the first time in my career as a civil servant and as a governor, I was heckled. <laughs> as I walked out, they were saying, shame on you, shame on you. We shall impeach you. But I remained firm. Because one thing that I know is when the law is on your side, you are right. The law will defend you. And that's why whenever things get hot, what defends me are the standing orders and the constitution of Kenya. And that's what I know you will do. And that was captured clearly in our national anthem, the first stanza, that may justice be our shield and defender. Kenyans were not foolish. When, I mean, those who came up with the national anthem were not foolish. And that now lies with you. As I conclude, I just want to say what we are going to do is what Obama said, and I quote, that we must carry forward the work of the women who came before us and ensure our daughters have no limits on their dreams, no obstacle to their achievements, and no remaining ceilings to shatter. May God bless you, Asante Nisana. Thank you, thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, for your messages of congratulatory and the also statement of support. Uh, let me thank everybody who has spoken. I think you have done very well with the time. And now the moment you have been waiting for. All right, and those are keynote speeches carrying on there at the Safari Park Hotel where the Chief Justice is having her first luncheon and uh, different uh, leaders are presently there trying to simply just give tribute to her as she takes over the reins at the judiciary and uh, a lot of key issues have uh, come out of this, many uh, applauding her for getting the CJ's role as well as uh, being the first female CJ in the country. And this is a momentous occasion indeed for the judiciary as well as for Kenya and uh, for the country at large. Well, remember, this is uh, ongoing coverage here on KTN News and uh, we'll be staying on with it. And of course, uh, we'll be crossing over there once we have the CJ making her remarks. Well, we shall proceed with this particular coverage in a short while. Welcome to Business Today. My name is Abi Agina and a lot happening in the country including today the funeral service happening for the late Dr. Chris Kirubi. We'll also be giving you more updates on this as well as we'll be taking you back live to Safari Park where the CG's luncheon is currently 
ongoing. We shall be keeping a close pulse on this here on the show. Well, let's move this uh, coverage of the CJ in a short while. But for now, I want to get in touch with our regular segment that is a business chat where we have our resident analyst, and that is uh, Ken Gishinga joining us from our city center studios. And we also have Mr. Richard Agung, who is the chief economist at NCBA Group. Thank you, gentlemen, for making time for us. And I know this might be a bit off cut for you. And uh, Richard, uh, we have a female chief justice. A um, uh, very interesting uh, transition in the judiciary. I just want to get your quick comments on this. Well, I think it's a, it's a, it's a very laudable achievement. So uh, it's a first. Um, I'm sure other Castro speakers emphasize that. Uh, as they say, it's a glass ceiling that's been shut. And, and we're really very proud of uh, this moment. So uh, let me also join the rest of the Kenyans to congratulate her. Uh, oh. on this uh, incredible achievement and I think uh, we look forward to hearing our inaugural address. Uh, All right. Uh, so, yeah. We can't wait for her inaugural address uh, after she was sworn in of course uh, a couple of weeks ago. And uh, Gishinga, I'd like to also pick your quick reactions on this uh, development and uh, we'll be getting back to Gishinga in a short while. But uh, Richard, this week we did see there was um, a launch of uh, the economic uh, review from uh, NCBA and we'd like to just get some aspects around the economy hasn't been performing at optimum. And uh, we, want, we understand that uh, the Chief Justice is about to speak. We want to briefly cross over there as we get her keynote speech. You no know, COVID has also made us more patient. We still have to spray the, the mic. Please have your seat. But before she speaks, my colleagues will not forgive me because we did not make people representing the executive here, those who are in the bones, chairperson, directors, civil servants who are here, constitutional commissions, please start so that you can wave and give them a clap, wherever you are from all the executive. Thank you very much. Thank you. Dr. Juma reminded me, and we won't have no home to go to. Thank you. <laughs> so let me take this time now to welcome to the stage Honorable Chief Justice and the President of the Supreme Court to speak to us. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, my sister, Professor. Mangrit Kobia, she is so, so strategic in the way she has organized this event. It's a very, very emotional moment for me. Allow me to repeat and reiterate the protocols that have been stated here, because when I look around, I just see brothers and sisters, great colleagues, present here, and I'm so, so grateful that you all came to celebrate and give thanks with me. Thank you so much for coming. As I stand here, I remember those moments we spent together in the civil society, and as we say in Kemero, a song we sing. Boreolia aleri nambie aleri na maromba e na kerunduo mwadhani. What that means is people ask, how was she brought up? I do not want to go very far to say how I was brought up. I think I said it all during those interviews. But let me acknowledge that I was actually curated in the civil society. <laughs> People who came from FINDA, please be upstanding. We see you. <laughs> Great sisters, <laughs> Nancy Barasa. Lilian Moaura, the founder of FINDA. 
this is the organization that made me who I am today for fighting for those rights, uh, for being so human that we embraced humanity as a way of doing life is what has made me who I am today. Thank you very much, my sister Nancy. We've walked this journey together. And I see many people, uh, Dr. Jennifer Aria, uh, Kenya Women Finance Trusts, wherever you go, you find these uh, uh, banks giving money, accessing money to the vulnerable women. I also served there, uh, crew, uh, all these human rights organizations that we worked with uh, brought me up until 18 years ago when you gave me up to the judiciary. And when you gave me to the judiciary, I found another home that is well established by our sister, the Justice Nambuya there, our mother in the judiciary, and all my sisters and brothers uh, from the judiciary. I also come from a very strong family like you have seen. I have this spouse and partner, my roommate, for that, do I say? 36, 37 years. Sometimes he tells me he married 10 different women. He married a small girl from the village. He married a lawyer who was shy. Then he married a human rights activist. Then he married a judge. Then he married a children rights defender. He married a judge of appeal and now finally a chief justice. <laughs> and I have my children, Tas, Kelvin, Kome, you can stand. They are the two men, the two men in my life. And I also see our daughter, Kagueria, uh, there. They are my strongest uh, pillars uh, in my life, and they have worked with me this journey. It would never have been possible were it not for them, especially my husband always telling me it is possible, even when I thought things were not going to be possible. <laughs> even when we went to Kyogolis to Mbare, Father Kaisa, and I came back, uh, I don't know where I got that kind of a disease. I was swollen the whole body. He took me to hospital and we were in the hospital the whole night just to be told it was stress that I was suffering from because we had been insulted and abused and called all manner of names and I was still pretending I was very strong until my body was swollen and I could not even lift my leg. So thank you for the support. Today, colleagues, friends, my brothers and sisters, I really am very, very emotional because I'm standing here because of the grace of God and the grace of the Kenyan people who made it possible for me to go through those interviews through their representatives at JSC, I was nominated for the position of the Chief Justice. And through the people's representatives, I was, my nomination was approved by the National Assembly. And also, through their representative, His Excellency the President, ingratiously swore me into office. And here I am today. This is a journey I've walked through the footprints of the community. I belong to the community. I was brought up by a community that was led by my mother, a prayerful woman, a peasant farmer who just believed in the power of prayer. She had no income of any nature. But through prayers and gathering what we could gather, with our own hands, I was, going, I was able to go to school, especially when I was called in Form 1, 
and she had to sell her entire harvest of beans to send me to school. So when I'm here and people uh, want to say I cannot be independent because I can be compromised, who would compromise me since I went to Form 1 and I finished school and I reached where I am through the power and grace of God? So I will never tire to say I'm so, so grateful to the community, to Kenyans from all walks of life, to the international community. I have received enormous messages of support. I have received prayers. I have received so many prayers. And I'm so grateful in this convening today for the support that you have pledged to give me. Because indeed, justice is our business. Justice is a collective responsibility. It cuts across all of us. And as I have said many times, all of us are owning something about justice. If you are not working in the executive, if you are not working in the registration, if you are not working in the civil society, something about justice is happening there. And if nothing about justice is happening in your life, you have the power of sorting out disputes that come in your way. You don't have to go to court. We have the ability to solve our own problems. And this is what I have been saying. We need to empower our people so that they can take the agency of resolving their own disputes. Because sometimes when you go to court, we judges confess that we really may not even know your case. You are the one to tell us your case. And who is better placed to solve their own problem than your own self, the owner of the problem? So this is why I'm very, very grateful when I hear of such soaring support because I know we will build networks, we will collaborate with each other, and we will find solutions for all the problems that we encounter every day in this country. I'm ready as your Chief Justice to be your servant, to be the servant of the Constitution, to be able to bring that convening of our interest to solve our own problems and to avoid conflict at every corner of our lives. So today, I have heard very, very encouraging words from all the speakers who have spoken. Thank you very much uh, for the support you have pledged. Indeed, this job can never be done by one person. We have to do it together. Uh, we have to build these partnerships within and outside the judiciary. Since I took the oath of office on the 19th of May, every day until today, I have seen what I would describe as a miracle in the very, very short time that I've sat in that office. Because every day things happen, and I'm like, is it my power? No, it cannot be. And I'll just give you an example of today. Uh, today, we were visited by the, uh, the Director General of the Nairobi Metropolis, and he showed us five buildings that he has drawn for the judiciary to open small claims courts in five spots in Nairobi. <laughs> we are going to have a small claims court in Dagoretti. We are going to have another one in Nembakasi. I saw a member of parliament for Kasarani. We are going to have a small claims court in uh, Kasarani, another one in Madare, and another one in Fuatanyayo. Those are five small claims courts for us to send magistrates and he told us those buildings will be ready in 60 days. 
we were just approving whether they meet our standards, whether they are the kind of courts that we envisaged. When I had mooted the idea we were speaking with somebody, I expected when they were building the hospitals in these areas that they would just give us a room. We did not get a room. We got a full French court, which is now called the Small Claims Court. And those courts will be finalizing matters within 60 days. When your case is hand, within three days you get your judgment. And any claim below the value of one million will go to those courts. So that will reduce the traffic to the courts. Isn't that a miracle from God? <laughs> then the same day I come here and we were recording all those branches you have named, we were writing them down. The, the Council of Governors to open courts in all the counties, these small claims courts, courts where we can have matters um, determined expeditiously. We are so, so grateful. I am personally so grateful on behalf of the judiciary for the kind of support that uh, we have received for the uh, less than four weeks that I've been in the office. Uh, we will continue to pray because every day I pray I was not shy uh, to say I'm a woman of God, I'm a woman who believes in prayer. And every day I feel God pointing me to a certain direction. And I'm going to share it with you. First and foremost is to defend the independence of the judiciary to defend the Constitution. And God has told me to say this in a very, very simple language, that the Constitution tells us, and it was brought here, that we should never decide our case on the direction of any party or any authority. So all of us are bound by the Constitution. So nobody, whoever tell a judge, a magistrate, or an adjudicator, how to decide a case. So that is what God tells me every day. If somebody is coming to court, let them come with their evidence and the law, and that is all that we are going to follow. Then this confusion about the interdependence, to me it is so clear, and God has made it very clear to me, is that we serve one Kenyan. And Kenyans like to call her Wanjiko. Because we are all in the service delivery of Wanjiko, whom we must all serve, then we must work together. And when we work together and people see me having a cup of tea with Governor Wambora and Ken Rusaka, they should not think we are discussing a case. Because indeed, we cannot discuss a case. We are discussing matters about access to justice, for the vulnerable people who have been going to court here in, year out, and we are seeking solutions on how we can expeditiously deliver justice. In other words, if you see me having a cup of tea with His Excellency the President, we are discussing administration of justice. We are discussing the poor infrastructure of the institution of the judiciary. You have all been to the Supreme Court. It is now a museum. That's where we live, that's where we operate from. And you know, we are not artifacts, we are human beings. <laughs> so the building is in a poor state of disrepair. It is reeking, objects are falling from above on people when they are walking there. So we need to repair that building. And as we repair that building, we are saying the judiciary is part of the government. And we are asking, are we an illegitimate child of the government of Kenya? So when you see me talking to him, that is the question I'm asking him. Please, we need resources from parliament. We need support to bring that infrastructure of the judiciary 
to the other level of governments or other uh, departments of government because we are part and parcel of this government. So if you see me talking to these colleagues, you know that I'm negotiating for the space of this prodigal son or daughter who has been thrown out of the government and is now coming back with a lot of needs. We have so many needs in the judiciary. So the support that has been printed here, including from our partners, our donors, is most welcome. And as I said during those um, sessions, we are going to ensure that there will be delivery of justice. I've been asked, and I was asked also in Parliament, what is my vision of the judiciary? And mine is simple, like I said, to ensure the, the institution is independent, that judges deliver. Judges deliver justice independently and in an accountable manner, because, of course, Independence goes with accountability. Number two, what disturbs me and continues to disturb me is the delay that Kenyans have got to wait for justice. That when you go in the justice system, it doesn't matter whether you're a litigant, it doesn't matter whether you're a witness, because I've seen witnesses, some young who are victims, go in court and have to wait for five years until they are grown-ups. So this is what we are going to work together and make sure that our justice is delivered expeditiously. Number two, that distance of accessing justice, because I have done a survey and it costs some people even two days of travel to access justice, to see that justice is accessible to all the people in all the counties and in all the sub-counties uh, that we have. And we bring the infrastructure that is necessary to support the delivery of justice and a way in which we can deliver justice uh, with dignity. And in a way that even when people have a problem, they can be able to resolve that problem uh, with dignity. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm so humbled by this uh, celebration. The people who organize this uh, auspicious uh, celebration, this beautiful luncheon, uh, the Ministry of Public Service, and all the people who worked together, our CASs, your energy, your love, your care. I I'm just so emotional I could break down. Uh, when I think of myself as that little girl from the village, that young bride who got married and had to struggle leading and breastfeeding with one hand and writing thumb paper on the other, that I'm the one standing on this stage to be celebrated. As the Chief Justice of the Republic of Kenya, I think we have a great country. We need to celebrate this country. This is a country of possibilities. This is a country of hope. And this is a country of love that we should completely remain so faithful to and do what we have to do to make even the things that are not working work. They are within our means to make them work. So thank you very much from the bottom of my heart, all of you. When I sat there listening to these beautiful speeches, I wanted to continue sitting and listening and hoping each one of you could speak because you are all great people. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you, our professor, Margaret Kobia. Thank you, all the cabinet secretaries, 